Good evening again, and welcome back. Just going over the housekeeping rules for these uh, sessions this evening. Please silence your cell phones if you haven't done so already. Each time we introduce a new dais, please identify yourself and your affiliation the first time you ask a question. Please wait until one of our two mic holders is with you before you ask a question. To get into the rotation, get their attention or mine. If you have a follow-up question, remind the mic holder so she stays with you. There is no flash photography allowed, nor video recording of any kind, including cell phone and tablet use. Tonight's sessions will be 12 minutes long for Iowa State, 10 minutes for Washington State University. Victoria Cyclones are with us. They have a date in the Sweet 16 next weekend in Boston. Head coach TJ Otzelberger is with us, along with Trey King and Taman Lipsy. We're going to ask TJ to start off with a statement on this game, and then we'll go to questions for all three of the gentlemen on the dais. TJ, please. Yeah, it's an uh, honor to be sitting up here. Played a uh, really good Washington State team, Coach Smith does a phenomenal job. Those guys play with great purpose. Uh, they're a very physical team, and they're a very, they had a tremendous season. We knew it would take our very best today, and we were fortunate, especially in that second half, that, that we had that. So uh, hats off to our guys for their, their toughness, their competitive spirit, and, and for stepping up, especially in that second half. But we knew it was going to be a really challenging game, and uh, hats off to Washington State because they brought the best out in us. Start on the right hand side. Thank you. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Taman and Coach, this is questions for you. Even though you didn't have much success offensively in the first eight minutes, could you sense that both Taman and Keyshawn's drives were starting to soften them up a little bit and that that paid dividends later in the game? We'll go with Taman first, then the head coach. Definitely. Me and Keyshawn were just trying to stay aggressive. Obviously, our shots uh, weren't falling from the perimeter uh, to start that game. But we were just locked in defensively, trying to uh, take our mind off of the offense, let, let that uh, come to us, and uh, just stay aggressive like we did. We were able to draw some fouls, get to the line later in that first half. And um, just staying aggressive is, is, thing, is the thing that me and Keyshawn do so well. And uh, that was able to make it be a big factor as the game got going. Yeah, I would say. You know, we, we take a tremendous sense of pride in scoring off of our defense. And, you know, that, that didn't happen early. They did a good job spacing us out and having us behind the plays. Uh, probably the stat that we look at the most to determine how well we're doing is points off turnovers. And, and we had 21 to 4. So I think, you know, our, our guys are a very together and poised group. Um, we prepare and practice in such a way that we know we're going to have adversity and uh, credit to Washington State doing a great job putting us on our heels and, and you know, credit to our guys for not panicking, not getting too low or, or you know, emotional and just staying the course, waiting for it to come back around for us. Question for Coach Alec Bussey, 24-7 Sports. Um, earlier in the year, you've talked about you guys having a diverse scoring attack. I think you had four or five guys finished with at least 10 points, 21 points off the bench from two players. How much do you feel like that really helped you guys kind of push through some of the struggles you had early in the game? Yeah, it, it helped us a lot. I mean, certainly, you know, we didn't score it great early. Kurt Jones hitting that three early on was a big shot. And he's been, you know, that, that great impactful guard scorer off the bench and playmaker for us when he gets in and has an instant impact. And Hassan did a terrific job right away. Also got to the foul line and um, was getting behind the defense. Um, he's such a terrific lob threat. So, again, balance, to me, it's, it's about our guys making the right play and playing for one another. So uh, regardless of, you know, how a team defends certain things, we have a plan of attack to take advantage of that. And our guys take so much pride in making the right play for each other. 
and usually what happens when you do that is there is there is balance to your offense and it's been really good for us especially the last few weeks you talked there about Curtis's uh, three-pointer to get you guys on the board with a field goal he's been someone who's knocked down big shots for you all season how much confidence do you have in him kind of being able to step up and make those kind of shots and big moments for you yeah I mean I, I think if there's <laughs> evidence by his playing time and, and how much we have him out there in key situations. He's had a lot of games over the last eight to ten where he's led us in minutes played and that's coming off the bench which shows you how much we believe in him and, and then his teammates the confidence they have and, and looking for him and these guys do such a great job uh, of finding each <laughs> each other so um, proud of Kurt for staying aggressive and proud of his teammates for continuing to find him. Down here in the front row, thank you. Uh, Greg Wood, spokesman of you. Uh, TJ, you guys were blitzing them even, I mean, every you know ball screen, which they were able to kind of pass out of early on. Not so much in the second half. Did something change in terms of how they would kind of get out of those, or how did that kind of turn around for you guys? Trey, cool. and then the, the head coach, please. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question one more time? <laughs> With you guys blitzing like almost every ball screen, they were able to kind of pass out of those early on, but you got to turn those into turnovers as the game went on. Did they like change something up and that's how you guys forced turnovers or how did that kind of change as the game went on? Uh, not necessarily. I think it was more of just what we did, um, upping, our, upping our aggressiveness on the defensive end. I think in the first half, uh, we were a little bit too tentative. Uh, we knew that they liked to play out of the skip as well, which, uh, you know, in preparing for that game, I think we were a little too, too worried about that instead of focusing on what we do well, which is, you know, turning people over. So, you know, in the second half, uh, in halftime after we regrouped, we talked about, you know, how we only forced five turnovers and how, you know, that's unacceptable to us and how, you know, we were going to really try to, uh, quite frankly, just triple it like we normally do. And so, you know, credit to our guys, you know, maintaining that focus and really upping uh, the aggression, especially in the ball screen and forcing those big turnovers in key moments. Yeah, I, I would say <clears throat> certainly challenged our guys at halftime to, to be who we believe we can be as a team, regardless of the respect that we have for their program. I also am confident that over 40 minutes, the defensive pressure can have a cumulative effect on you. I mean, Rice played 40 minutes, Wells played 39. So I think over, over time, um, defensively, it, it settles in for us and, and we're able to have that effect. We've been pretty good separating in second halves of games as you know we try to wear people down. So fortunate that it went that way for us in the second half. Yep, we're back here on the aisle. Thank you. <coughs> Coach, obviously you, know, you talk a lot about being focused on your daily habits, but you're now going to your second Sweet 16 in just three years at Iowa State. Can you just reflect on how much that means to you, um, to this program, to two Sweet 16s in three years? Yeah, you know, obviously um, it's a tremendous honor to lead this program. You look at our fans and the support we have. Um, I feel like I've grown up in coaching at Iowa State, so it's it's a place that means so much to me, to my family. Um, it's it's just it's truly an honor. I got one of my best friends on the planet right down here to be on this journey with him as our athletics director, uh, and the awesome support that we have. Um, from our administration, our fans, those who have come before us. I mean, um, man, it's a pretty awesome experience. So uh, credit to our guys. They're the ones doing the hard work every single day. And um, certainly thankful to them, but um, very, very humbling, humbling experience for sure. Right hand side. Thank you. This is um, how, how convenient is it to, to know that you can scout the team that you're going to play in the Sweet 16 like right now? Like how, how different is that than maybe what you've been used to and how beneficial is it to be able to just watch the team as opposed to having to get tape or watch it on TV? I think that's for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know about all that. I just say like we believe in our way of doing things and you know we, we certainly – want to be aware of tendencies of our opponents and things that we can, um, you know, prepare for and be disruptive. But we spend a lot more time focusing on us being the best version of ourselves. So, you know, we'll, we'll absolutely be very mindful of that opportunity. And at the same time, 
Uh, my message in our guys is going to be to continue to focus on us, being the best team that we can be. Uh, we've had a great focus that way, and, and I feel really confident in our group um, as we do that. Anything else for the Cyclones of Iowa State? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much, and best of luck next weekend in Boston. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.
The Washington State Cougars are with us. Head coach Kyle Smith is joined by Jalen Wells, Isaac Jones, and Andre Yakumovsky. We're going to ask head coach to make a statement on the game that just concluded, and then we'll go to questions for all four of the gentlemen here on the dais. Kyle, please. Um, just an awesome experience. So proud of the way our guys came out and competed to start that game. Uh, I know I'm going against the Big 12 Conference champs and top five team, and uh, we were unintimidated. Similar, you know, we played obviously some teams like that, and just didn't play well enough to win, to be honest. But we we stuck to our game plan. We knew we had to really keep our turnovers down. I thought Miles did an awesome job of uh, running our team and getting us shots, and Jalen kept us in there making shots in the first half. We got a little bit of foul trouble, um, and they just uh, the start of that second half probably. Uh, dug ourselves a little bit of hole that we just just couldn't quite get out of. You're gonna have to make plays to beat a good, a really good team, and um, gotta make. You can't do it going five for 23. But uh, they Lipsy hit I think two step backs and clutch shots, and um, you got to give a hat tip when they do that. So I didn't. We didn't feel like we beat ourselves, um, and that's you know you can hold your head high if you can beat hard, and these guys could beat it hard tonight. Start right here in the front. Yeah, uh, Greg Wood, spokesman of you. Kyle, obviously you guys would rather have won and, you know, moved on, but this is this program's best season in, you know, a decade and a half. Where is your head at in, just in terms of processing this season overall and just kind of how this, uh, you know, went? It's, boy, it's 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 really hard. Um, I think, it'll, like I said, I think it'll wash over me in a couple weeks or as a season, well, a year from now, whatever. Um, but you're trying to stay present, enjoy it, and also be prepared, and there's so many distractions coming at you. And, going through this it's an awesome experience and uh, first for me as a head coach and honor to coach these guys they're they're easy man they were a joy and appreciate them and uh, can't thank them enough we, we talk about gratitude and thankful we're thankful every day we, we did and, and uh, today was no different so um, it's, it's like I said we started five years ago trying to build this thing into something and and uh, Two, two NITs and now an NCAA tournament, an NCAA tournament win. And uh, evidently, I, I was unaware, but people said we didn't belong. <laughs> so we proved that we belong, to say the least. And uh, it's just uh, an honor. Jamie Vinnick, uh, CougFan.com. Coach, it kind of seemed like what they were doing defensively and just the amount of pressure, it, it kind of threw off the rotations a little bit where you were worried about maybe turnovers or size matchups and, and kind of, you know, maybe didn't get Isaiah in as much as you would have wanted, had to kind of go with Kamani and Ruben just for the size. Was that kind of how you felt uh, just with what they were doing? A little bit. I thought the ball handling was really uh, important against them, and we did such a good job for so long in that group. And um, I didn't think it was the type of team. We haven't really seen a team like this that guards this way. So... That's hard to tell the guys like, hey, the lineups are going to be a little different tonight. Um, and then, you know, don't get the early check in like maybe Isaiah would have wanted or even Ruben. Um, but I was really proud Ruben was ready to play. Uh, he'd sat there a while and Isaiah got in there late and I thought he took the right shot. So that he, he did, you know, and uh, not not disappointed. Sometimes they don't go in, but he, he was he was the threat that he's been. Um, and uh, they're just played, they're just different. You know, they're just put so much heat and they double you, they blitz you at the top of the floor, they uh, throw everyone at you on the baseline. So um, they're unique. Right hand side, gentlemen. Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Jalen, this question's for you. You guys got off to a really good start. You you in particular did. What were you guys doing really well early? And then maybe how did they, how did they start to take that away as the game went on? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I think we did a, just did a really good job of handling the pressure. Uh, we were playing re really unselfish, finding me. Uh, and I just think uh, we really just prepared well, honestly. We knew that they were going to um, just kind of like stay off the baseline, driving baseline. So, you know, that trap's coming. Um, I think that's kind of what it was in the first half. Obviously, second half, um, definitely missed more shots. I think there are good looks, um, you know, just got more work to do. For any of the players, how do you guys kind of, you know, find a balance of obviously, um, you know, disappointing not to win and not to move on, but also uh, kind of realizing uh, what you guys did this season and how special the season it was for Washington State? Andre, you're first, and then Isaac is second. Um, I'm just proud of these guys, you know. Uh, at the beginning of the year, nobody believed in us. Uh, it was just, you know, us in the, in the Pullman community. So, you know, we just proved a lot of people wrong this year. 
uh, obviously it wasn't enough to, to, to get the win today, but uh, I'm just super proud and just, uh, you know, just thankful for this amazing experience. Yeah, like he said, uh, we were proving people wrong, you know, we had a good season. Uh, I've never been a part of a team like this before, so I'm just blessed and I thank God for it. Uh, I didn't go the way we wanted it to, but I wouldn't trade in it for the world. Uh, Jalen, I know we've talked a million times about you going from D2 to D1, but to go for 20 points, you know, in the second round of the NCAA tournament, what do you think that says just about your game and the way you kind of developed over the years? Um, a lot of it just comes from belief in the program. Um, Coach Smith believed in me. All these guys believe in me. So um, from day one, I knew this was the right choice. Uh, they gave me the opportunity to work, uh, to fight for minutes, to earn a spot. So I'm really just proud. I'm proud to chose to go here. On the right. Joe, this is a two for – I'm Emmett Bruce Gornia from Cable 8. Um, this was intended first for Kyle and then Isaac. Um, Coach, I asked you this question last year after the loss in the Pac-12 tournament to Oregon. Um, what does the community mean to you? And I know when I asked you this, it was not the same community that packed Beasley into the largest um, crowd in the state of Washington. Um, and then to Isaac, I know you've been on the Palouse for quite some time. What is that support from Mo over eight miles in the east in Moscow like? Um, it was awesome. Anyone has been a part of it. And like I said, I walk around town and I'm a beloved. <laughs> like I said, we were 10 and 15 last year and people were thankful for what we've been. And I can't uh, be more excited to be a part of it and then to have people turn out and really love these guys up. And, uh, and I told the guys I got in the locker room, some of them did. I said, man, go out there and thank those. There's, we had a, such a good crowd that traveled out here, so, and it's uh, touching. And uh, they were really proud of their place. They're proud of Washington State. And it's, uh, um, there's a little love affair. And it's, it was neat to see people in there and filling it up. Man, there's, there's nothing like the Palouse, man. Uh, I still have people at Idaho that text me out there every game and uh, follow me and wish me luck. Um, I've never experienced nothing like it. I just feel nothing but the love everywhere we go there, and I'm just grateful for it. Down here in the front, we're under three minutes to go. Thank you. Kyle, as the days uh, ahead come, what do you think you'll miss most and just in general about coaching this group of guys? Um, great question. You know, uh, you know, I haven't even thought about what, what I'm gonna miss. I'm still still in the moment with these guys, and uh, I, I'm, <laughs> uh, you know, Isaac coming over, and you never know how a grad transfer and guy's gonna fit, and and he was, uh, he's been an awesome treat to be around as a person. He's a really quiet guy, but he's got a big heart, cares a lot, and. Uh, uh, just I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what they're going to do next in life. I'm really not, <laughs> I'm not going to miss them. They're always going to be a part of it. And uh, you know, Andre, where he came from, my goodness, and that uh, <laughs> we got a, we got a crazy story after his freshman spring and everything, and and uh, his love and his loyalty. I'll, I, there's not a second place uh, in my coaching career. 31 years of uh, got to carry. I'll miss him. If he's not back, <laughs> who knows? But uh, this and every year is going to be different. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, those guys are great, and they they left the mark and the legacy on the program. And so, like we keep building. I know, like I said, we everyone would want to talk about how many new faces, but there were seven returners. And they care a lot, and they keep the standard high. And a guy like Jay Mullins, and uh, who played a lot last for, last year, and had a, such an awesome attitude about supporting his teammates, uh, never, never said a word, never did anything but support his teammates. And uh, so I don't know if he can replicate that. So hopefully they've let their imprint and the next group will do some, something similar. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and best of luck in your futures.